Well, here we are again, <clears throat> part two of Taming the Wild Pleat. Remember, this was the kilt where it looked like it had been dry cleaned. The pleats, there was no press, really, no discernible press in the pleats, and they were quite pie-shaped. Initially, I thought it had been dry cleaned, but looking at the rest of this, looking at the bagginess of the front apron and this corrugated effect across the sewn part of the pleats, um, and this is, we've, we've already pressed this. We're going to have to press it a second time. And then you look at the, the condition of the apron, the inner apron. I'm starting to think that this thing was thrown into the washing machine by some criminally stupid person. There's no other word for it. So I'm going to give it an iron, another a second iron, to see if I can shrink out just by use of a very hot iron and a wet cloth, if I can shrink, if I can reduce some of this cloth, this bagginess, um, we're a little bit less concerned about the inner apron because, of course, it's never seen when you're wearing it. But it still, it looks like hell, right? The other thing I'm going to do, the originally, <clears throat> pardon me, the inner, the left left hand apron strap, the inner apron strap, was sewn inside the lining the same way we do it on the, the other side. But that's not best practice. So I'm going to sew it, <clears throat> pardon me, after I've pressed it, I'm going to, I'm going to improve this. I'm going to sew it um, there. I'm going to pick a spot and sew it because um, this is better practice because it gives you more latitude for tightening. And again, you know, the moment that you're, you're um, when you're putting the kilt on, the strap bottoms out against the buttonhole it shows you you've dropped a little bit of weight or the kilt was just lar too large to begin with and it doesn't fit you. So by putting it here, it just makes it easier. It gives you a little more latitude for sizing, but also if it bottoms out, it's a simple process just to move it one direction or another. We've also, on all three of these kilts, we've also moved the left hand buckle back one pleat width because originally the buckle was so far forward it was actually slightly forward of the leading edge here of the buttonhole and that meant when the strap came through it was having to push the cloth out of the way to, to get into the buckle bad practice so we've moved it back we've sewn it on so uh, so yeah I'm going to put the camera down I'm going to give this thing a good hot press oh yeah one more thing you can see that we've corrected every one of these darn pleats. And we've also sewn it the usual basting that you see in my earlier, how to baste your kilt before pressing video. Um, and in this case, because it was in such a lousy state, one, two, and a third baste along the bottom. Because again, somebody has shortened this kilt by basting up the edge. Jesus, shake your head, people. That's not how you do it. So yes, yeah, so we have a heavier length, heavier thickness of cloth here. It's essentially doubled right here so we have to we're going to give it a second heavy press to see if it looks a little less awkward ah oh, yeah okay get to work mcdonald